a Bible uh, uh, setting on tonight. Amen. We're excited about tonight. We're excited about every uh, Tuesday night uh, Bible class. And uh, Pastor Simpkins, like we said uh, on uh, last week, uh, Missionary uh, Hunter uh, started these calls and, you know, with these series, and it's just been on fire. And we thank God for it. And it's all designed to bring us uh, closer uh, together. I do honor my wife uh, on tonight. Uh, my, you know, this is my, uh, I can't say it. This is my, this is my sugar and my coffee. I'll put it like <laughs> <laughs> Woo, just the sugar? <laughs> yeah, you know, she's my vanilla cream <laughs> in my coffee. And I love me some coffee. Uh, early in the morning, Minister Green, but I got to have that vanilla cream. And uh, Missionary Ivory is my vanilla cream. And we thank God for her on tonight. We do honor all the elders and missionaries and all my brothers and sisters that's on the line. Uh, we're excited about uh, the lesson on tonight. I'm going to just have a quick word of prayer. Uh, and then we're going to get right into it. And we hope uh, that uh, uh, we have some participation on tonight. And that's what it's all about. We want to uh, interact. Amen. To get some participation, and let's see what the Lord is trying to have have to say to us on tonight. So, Father, we thank you, God. We praise you for another uh, Bible study, and God, we ask that you look down upon us in a special way. And God, we can't do nothing without you. So, we ask that you come on in on tonight, God. God, make this study and the word uh, that we are presenting on tonight be uh, plain, and that a baby, baby able to understand and God if you do it we'll give you all the glory and if we do it we'll give you all the praise God let everything be done decent and in order that you may be glorified and we thank you for it in Jesus name thank God amen amen we uh amen. going to get ready to get started I tell you what Pastor Simpkins I feel like I'm in a ship right now and uh I have let my wife be the captain of the ship and I am just sort of on. So I'm guiding this ship. So I'm going to turn it over to her hands at this time. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Uh, learning God's word is exciting. Yes. I don't know about you, but I love to learn more about God's word. What about you? Y'all know I love the chat. Amen. And we give honor to God who's the head of our life and the keeper and the watch of our soul. Our pastor and our first lady. Amen. And to my own very dear husband. Amen. Thank God for Elder Ivory. I love him dearly. Amen. And I just thank God. Let me see. What do I like? Mmm. I like chocolate. Yes, you do. And we're going to leave it at that. I like chocolate. And I thank God for my chocolate sitting right next to me. See, Pastor Simpson, you do, you, you start this. <laughs> you start this. But everybody, do a favor, because I just need to know y'all there. Amen. Can you please put some hearts in the chat? Put it on your screen, because we love our first lady. And let's let her know that we love her. Come on, put those hearts up there so that she can see them. Come on, everybody. Ah, put the heart. Put your heart up there. Ah, we love our first lady. First lady, we love you. Amen. And ain't nothing you can do about it. That brings me to our little icebreaker. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all know I like to have fun learning God's word. And the icebreaker is just one word. It's one word that I need you to describe Amen. One word to describe your church. Mm. One word. One word. Uh, put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. One word. I see fire. Sister Hannah said fire. Uh, Sister Wright said busy. I know that's the truth. Hallelujah. Complete. Jay said say complete. Uh-huh. Come on. Keep on putting them in the chat. Uh, one word. This is our icebreaker this morning. Uh, this yeah, afternoon. One yeah. word. Hallelujah, Jesus, amen, amen. Joy, Galaxy 7 say joy. Oh, yes, hope, I see hope, uh-huh. 
God. Ah, Lord, powerful. I like that. Powerful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, come on, y'all. Put it in the chat. One word to describe your church. Loving. Loving. Mm. I like that right there. Amen. 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 Powerful, loving. Amen. Friendly. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, servants, yes, 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 servant. Ah, uh, I love that. Organize, yes, it is. Oh, goodness gracious, we got so many words. Uh, dancing, <laughs> <laughs> dancing, church. shouting, ah, uh, peaceful, uh, loving kindness. Oh, wow. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. You see any more elder? Ivy? Is it coming? Is yes. it coming? Yes. Joy. Joy. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Strong. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the participation. I just needed to know that the team was there. Yes. Ah, yes. uh, challenging. Yes. Peace. I like that. Challenging. Uh-huh. I just wanted to make sure that we were all here, amen, and we're part of the team, grace and mercy. Oh, mm. God, thank God for the grace and mercy, amen. Just want to make sure we're here, amen, Savior. Yes, they're coming. All right, thank God, amen, for the one word, beautiful. Yes, it's still coming, beautiful. Well, amen. Well, we just thank God for those one word and we gonna move on, but we thank God for that one word. Sometimes that's all it takes is one word when you're communicating with one another. Just that one word, amen, and building relationship, uh -huh. you know, that one word. And, and when it comes down to supporting one another. And so we're going to be focusing again Amen. Let it keep on giving, forgiving. Yes, I like that. Amen. We're just going to keep on, amen, going in that vein. Amen. So we're going to go, and I gave homework. Uh -oh. Last week, I gave some homework. We're going to tap into this, this homework because when we're learning God's word and we're teaching God's word, amen, we want it to fall on good ground. And in and, and order for it to fall on the good ground and you got to dissect it and then you got to get involved. Mm -hmm. You got to get involved <laughs> and you got to research it, amen, so that you be uh, a part of it and then it get inside you. So, so let's, let's deal with, let's deal with that. Do y'all do believe that, uh, that true and false? Uh, 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 the question was. It's right here. The question is, true or false? And then we thank God for the host. Let's see who our host is today. Amen. We thank God for Missionary Green being our host on today and Missionary Wright uh, for being our co-host on today. We thank God for you. And if you see people that uh, have comments inside the uh, chat, or they raised their <laughs> hand, amen. Would you be so kind to let us know so that we could acknowledge them? Because this is teamwork, amen? Mm -hmm. It's teamwork and communicating. And communication is so key and vital uh, for kingdom building. So let's get to that true and false question. Number two. When it comes down to supporting one another, do you have to communicate? When it comes down to supporting one another, yes. I see Missionary Hunter say yes. <clears throat> yes. Why? Jay say true. The amen. Amen. True. Okay. Why? Why? Brother Solomon said true. So when it comes down to supporting one another, do you have to communicate? Mm -hmm. 
Missionary Hunter has her hand up. Missionary Hunter. I say it's true. Yes, you have to communicate because otherwise, how would I know how to support you? Right? I am looking at or hearing what you're going through and hearing you ask for support. But I would I can only help through the experiences that I've had. I don't know where you are. So I have to communicate with you to say, how can I help? How can I support? Because in some, most instances, that person knows what they need. Um, and the instance that they you know, aren't sure, sometimes things that are really traumatic and really hurtful happen. You know, just, you know, a hug or words of encouragement may be supportive at that time, sometimes space, but we have to stay in tune with our brothers and sisters in Christ and in prayer to know, but we have to communicate because I don't want to give what I think you need. I want to give what you actually need. Mm. Amen. Very good point. Communication, get an understanding. And a closed mouth can't get fed. So if I don't know, I'm, I'm playing a guessing game. And Minister right. Green has his hand up. Minister Green. Yes, uh, communication is very important. And also in communication, you have to be an active listener, meaning that you have to tune everybody, everything else off and pay attention to the individual that you are listening to, who, who, you, who you are communicating with. That means that you have to give your undivided attention to that individual. That way you can get an understanding and give them your full undivided attention and offer you to help that person to move along with their situation. Amen. Scripture says, in all thy getting, get an understanding, right? So listening is a key tool in communicating. And we'll, we'll see that in our lesson. <clears throat> Listening is a key tool. So it takes two. One, you have to be able to listen and you have to be able to respond. Do we have another in the chat? When it comes down to supporting one another, do you have to communicate and why? Amen, host. Do we have another one before we move on? No hands at this time. Amen. So we thank God for those participants. Amen. Because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Amen. Every answer is a good answer. Mm -hmm. Every answer is a good answer. Even if you don't know, even if you're not sure, that's what it's about. Amen. When we come in together, amen, and learning, learning about, amen, what God would have us to learn and for this week. And that is what? Growing healthy communication, right? While building relationships and supporting one another. So let us move on. Remember the homework I gave you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Remember? And it's, uh, we down in the area where it says giving soft answers. Let's talk and communicate with one another right about now. That's where we are. There you go, host, right there. There you go. So question number two. How can you diffuse mm. an argument through your response? Now, this was homework. This, is, this was homework. How can you diffuse an argument through your response? Let us know. Somebody in the chat, let us know. How, how can we as saints, how can we as men, and women of God diffuse arguments, whether it be at work, whether it be in the church, whether it be within your home, uh, with your spouse, your children, your, your siblings. How can we diffuse an argument through our response? 
Do we have one? Galaxy J7. This is Missionary Brooks. How I diffuse it is through prayer. Okay. That's how I diffuse it. Thank you. Amen. I see in the, in the chat, Sister Stevenson wrote, how do you support someone who doesn't know how to communicate? And then she says, I know, shut up and go talk with God. Amen. You know what, Sister uh, 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 Stevenson? One way we can do that is we have to allow the word to do the talking for us. And, and that's why I say learning God's word is exciting. The word of God, it helps us, amen, to learn how to live the life that Christ wants us to live. We're human, we're not perfect, but we're working toward issues, amen. We're working toward things uh, 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 to, to help us uh, uh, grow stronger in Christ and in our communication. And I like that. Uh, um, when you got someone who don't like to communicate, they shut down, mm -hmm. okay? They shut down. You can't get nothing out of them. You can't pull nothing out of them. You know, and then it becomes to be a lopsided conversation. Mm -hmm. It becomes to be a lopsided communication. So somebody done shut down, amen, and then dismiss themselves. I would say done left the building and they no longer is trying to communicate with you. But, but, but let's go to the word of God. How can we diffuse our argument through our response? And I will say this, and thank God for the pastor and our first lady and everybody else. Amen, amen. I will say number one, we have to own up to it. We have to own up to it, okay? If you messed up, own up to it. If you didn't want to communicate, come back and let them know where my mind was. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm working toward this. Help me. Let's go to first John, the first chapter, and we're going to deal with verses seven through 10. Go ahead, Elder Ivory. And Minister First Green John, has his hand up also. Who was that? I'm sorry. Minister Green. Minister Green, go ahead. No, I was uh, going to say that the way we can deal with that is if someone is that, remember, we always have to be listening to the individual and make sure that we uh, stay informed with the individual and stay in, in, that, in, that, in that form of communication with the individual at all times. And that's what I was talking about earlier is the active listener and, and give that individual our undivided attention as well and make sure that we're gonna continue like Missionary Brooks said, pray for the individual and not so much turn them off and sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we may get uh, discouraged with individuals. But we also, we have to know that we are all God's children and everything yeah. is not gonna be the same with each individual. No one in that church is, is the same. Everybody had different attitudes. So we have to approach individuals in a whole different way. And so we have to take a step back <laughs> before, before we even respond to individuals. So we mean that we have to stop, look, listen and breathe before we respond to anyone that's in that church and know who you're talking to. Know who you're addressing the issue with at all times. That's the most important thing. Amen. I'm sorry, was you finished? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fine, I'm finished. I just said, just know who you addressing the issue to and know who you're talking to because everybody may, you know, everybody's different, so that's it. And you have Amen. one other hand, uh, Missionary Hunter. All right, Amen. Missionary Hunter. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to um, agree with Minister Green. Um, you know, a part of my job every day is knowing who I'm talking to. Um, and it's when we're in church, and a lot of times we come into contact with people who we have not met before. 
um, people who just come into the church. I remember um, we had a gathering of some sort um, and one person there described an interaction they had with someone in the church. Um, and, you know, the person was thrown aback because it's, there's a lot happening in the building and you're not always aware of what's going on. Um, and so when you get to a person that you don't really know, but you can hear their emotion, I think active listening is so important. And sometimes when you listen and the person is talking and you can retell, okay, so what I'm hearing you say is, and you get that right, that really calms that situation down because you're not listening to them to argue with them. You're not listening to, to them to give them a response. You're listening to them to show them that you actually care about what's going on and whatever that interaction was. And you listen enough to apologize for what they felt you know, was happening. You know, everybody has their own truth. And so I absolutely agree. And to diffuse that, listen carefully because we're not all the same. And I may not have intended it, but our intentions sometimes. I think Missionary Green taught a Bible study on intentions, and that's a whole nother story. But just being an active listener is amazing. And I think that would really help in diffusing an argument. Amen. Do we have another in the response? No hands at this, at this time. Amen. And so I agree, you know, in order to diffuse, you know, a sticky situation, you know, sometimes you say, how can I respond in an easier way, you know, where without of, of offending that person? You know, so how, how can we respond easier or take the steam out of our response? Amen. Uh, I believe the pastor has his hand up. I think First Lady had her hand up first, but I do have something to say after she can say. All right, First Lady. Yeah, amen. Good evening, everyone. Yes, uh, I find that... Um, when someone comes to you like all upset, you can't get upset with them. Right. Like if they come to you yelling or whatever, and if you keep your voice down without, uh, you know, going up with them, pretty soon they will bring their voice down too, you know? So it's all in how you handle, you know, the situation. And then like it's so important, like it's been said several times, you have to know the individual who you are speaking with because when you have your own children, you don't handle them all the same way. That's true. You may this one in this manner because this is the way they react. Then you handle the other, this, you know, in that way that they will react. So that's how we have to handle, you know, it, I mean, I mean, that's the way. If someone came just yelling at me, you know, especially in the church environment, I would never start by yelling back at them. I would that's just um, take a deep breath because this little voice in my mind just keeps saying forgive them because they don't because they know not what they're doing you know mm -hmm. so, and so you have to get you a scripture and get you some word too to keep you under control amen because that's what does amen. it so anyway don't respond negative like they do just stay calm and then they will get calm too amen. thank you amen very wholesome sound words amen no uh, you know how they say every action is a reaction you know i can recall and i'm gonna tell the pastor i can recall you know we at a service and we had church and pastor you know the youth was getting ready to sing they didn't sing and now they outside and uh uh, uh we got bishop hamilton at the church and he preaching you know and then all of a sudden I get this frantic call, you know, rush and somebody come and give me one of the saints done slap my 11 year old son in the face and left a handprint, Ooh. a handprint in his face. Now I'm going to put it in your hands, Pastor, with much more to say. <laughs> that, that happened when, when Bishop Hamilton was there? Yes, he was well, in that's church. That's a long time ago. You got over that. Right? You, you prayed for him. You, 
You went outside. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, glory to God, one of the things, phrases I often use is uh, you got to learn how to respond rather than react. Mm -hmm. So in the response, you have just a second, a moment, a period of time where you think about what the best answer is rather than, you know, um, when they slap your child, you go out and slap them twice. You know, you right. think about it and uh, that kind of a thing. So respond. But one of the things I was going to say is uh, I know this is found, this deals with somebody being overtaken in a fault. Uh, but it does say in Galatians 6 and 1, considering yourself, uh, at least you also be tempted. Sometimes we got to be careful how we deal with other folks' situations, mistakes, uh, harsh words or whatever, because we too will have mistakes and harsh words and we want them to give us a break. I know all of us have been in a situation where we said something and it came out or it either came out or was received differently than it was intended. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to give others grace because we're going to need it. And so we come to them in a spirit of meekness, humility, hearing what they say. I often hear somebody say, you know, <coughs> you know I, I just give it straight. That's how I want it. But oftentimes the people who give it straight can't take it straight. Right. right. So we've got to be careful to um, to consider who we're, that we're talking to other people and how do we really want to be talked to ourselves. Amen. That is so true. That is so true, Pastor. You know, and, 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 you know, I look at things like this, you know, uh, and it's been said already. And I, I say this, own up to it. I'm going to be the first one. If I said something to you, you know, and you felt like I said something to you wrong, I'm going to be the first one to say, forgive me. You know, I'm going to be the first one humbly saying, forgive me, because I truly want to be on the same team, you know, on the same team and want to be able to live in harmony. You know, that's, 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 that's one thing I love. I love harmony. And so I'm going to be the first one to, to, to own up, you know, and if I messed up, I will be the one to ask for forgiveness. You know, my daddy used to say this all the time <laughs> to me. He said, baby, if you really want to resolve stuff real quick, always be quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. So I had to be quick to forgive and let that, that situation, amen, to, to get behind me uh, in regards to the lady slapping my son. I had to be quick, but I had to be taught that. I had to be taught that. Um, and then also I want to read, let me read uh, uh, Colossians 3 and 13. It says, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, and if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also I had to forgive her. You know, you step on my cat. I'm not going to step on your cat. Mm -hmm. Amen. You step on my dog and I'm going to step on your dog. That is not the way we supposed to live. Remember, you know, God is not asleep. He is well awake. And whatsoever thing we do as living epistles for God, he's watching. Yes. So we've got to be that example, right? And I heard somebody say, be willing to listen. Willing to listen. Real quick, let me go to Ephesians. You have a couple of hands. Have hands up. Oh, go ahead. Let the hands go. Sorry, Sister, right. okay. Sister Sybil and then Missionary Edmondson. I would thank you really have to um, seek the Lord in how to communicate with some people because some people are very sensitive and they get hurt very easily. So if you notice they're upset, you might want to give them a hug and take them away from the situation and talk to them on a one-to-one. -one. That's a good point. So in other words, we got to know each other. It takes, and that's, that's part of building up a team that's part of communicating. So we, we, we get to know each other. And if I know that you're, you, you know, you say, I'm not gonna go in there and say something that's gonna hurt you or say some grievous words that's going to make the situation even, even worse. I wanna be a little bit more tender hearted. Mm -hmm. um, somebody else had the hand up? Missionary Edmondson. 
Yes, praise the Lord. And also what I notice is that sometimes the person that hurts the person, they are afraid to go to that person and they might come to you. And so you have to know what to say to the person and how to say so that they will feel um, comfortable or better able to go to that person, you know, in peace, but not in wrath. Instead of siding with the person, they would go in peace and, you know, peaceful, peaceably mm -hmm. asking, you know, you said something and I was offended in peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes that person is that person is scared of that person saying whatever that person is saying. So that person is going to come to you and you have to be that peacemaker where yes. you have to guide her and say, you know what, sis? pray about it and you know when you go make sure your mind is at peace and is at rest and just calmly calmly talk to that person mm -hmm. with the love of the lord amen yes. that's it yes 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 do we have another one pastor simpkins i was gonna say thank you i'm enjoying all of this because this is good training and for all of us if we take all this in this is good because in the church we're going to have disagreements we're going to be find ourselves with somebody with two left shoes on and we, we, we're going to have that kind of situation and sometimes it's going to be us uh, but it is important to uh to understand also that uh, because we're saved and filled with the holy ghost does not make us doormats all right. right. So, but there is a way to deal with everything. And I've often used this phrase. I got it many years ago. I think it was Bishop Macklin gave it to many years ago. But we have to operate in meekness. Meekness is not weakness, even though they rhyme. Meekness is an iron fist and a velvet glove. So the idea is you get things dealt with properly, humbly. But that doesn't make you a doormat. You, you know, I'm saying to you, uh, Elder Ivory. I didn't, you know, sir, I didn't quite appreciate that. I hope, hope you know, that wasn't what was said. And uh, if I said anything, please forgive me. But, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings, Doc. So, you know, let's, you know, we good though. I just wanted to let you know. All right. Now, the idea is Elder Ivory can take that and say, well, I ain't going to talk to him no more. Or he can say, you know what, Pastor, you're absolutely, I, I, I did not intend for it to come out that way, but mm -hmm. that's where you took it. Please forgive me. This is really what I was saying. <laughs> Now we come reason together, right? And, and we both can grow through that situation. And actually we get to know each other better. We get to understand uh, the parameters with which we have to deal with each other. Amen, amen. Do we have another hand? Minister Green. Yes, I, I'm really enjoying this. I, I, I know you said about Ephesians, but I want to come from Ephesians uh, 4.29. It says, let no corrupted communication proceed out of your mouth, but that is which is which is good to to the use of edifying that is may that that is that it may minister grace until the hearers. So that means that we have to make sure that when we communicate with someone, we don't want nothing negative to come out of our mouth. We want to make sure that we edify the word of God when we communicate with one another. Amen, Minister Green, you right on the line because that was my scripture and I was just going to take it a little further on down. If you allow me, amen, the 30th verse, sir, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God <clears throat> with whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is our teacher. The Holy Ghost is our keeper. The Holy Ghost is our God. The Holy Ghost would deal with you and say, don't do that. Don't say that, you know, don't go in there like that. Um, do a self check. You know, the Holy Ghost will talk with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He will, he, he, that's why we have him. Amen. So that we, we, we will follow the Holy Ghost, follow the leading of the Lord. All right. And then in the 30 seconds, so let me read that down. 31 said, and get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling uh slander along with with every form of malice but this is what i like verse 32 says be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as christ has forgiven us so you know to bring to your point we have to rely on the word of god 
-hmm. Let's allow the word of God to penetrate our hearts. Let's allow the word of God. Amen. And if I find myself, amen, knowing, recognizing I need help in these areas where well, I'm going to go and ask the Lord to help me. Mm -hmm. Help me to be able to communicate with my sister. Help me to be able to understand where she was coming from or where he was coming from. Help me, Lord. I need your help. <clears throat> so then, is, do we have any more hands before we move on? No hands at this time. Okay, well, then that brings me to this question. Is it true when we throw out angry words? Is it true that we can throw out angry words in that same vein. Is it true you can throw out angry words? And if so, how can you resist the temptation today? How can you resist the temptation of not allowing what's in your mouth to come out or your feelings we, we in our feelings not to come out. How can we resist the temptation? We have to allow the spiritual man mm -hmm. to take reign. Uh, Missionary Hunter has her hand up. Okay, Missionary Hunter. Um, I was just gonna add, Yes, it's true that we can throw out angry words, um, but the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's in your heart? Right. And I think that's another reason why um, Jesus came back and said this new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the original commandment was love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, then you're putting junk in your heart. You're not treating yourself well. It is still not okay for you to treat me how you treat yourself if you are not treating yourself the way God's standard has it, right? Mm -hmm. And so fix your heart. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me, Lord, before mm -hmm. I say something to somebody, mm -hmm. before I respond to conflict, before I come and someone wrote in the chat a little earlier, you know, you come in, you got all this stuff going on in your, your house, on your job and all of these things, all of that stuff is in your heart. Get it out before you cross that threshold, have praise and worship in your car or however you get to church before you get there. And that's for anything on your job, but what's in your heart out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh fix your heart and we can fix this right here that throwing out angry words because what's in you is going to come out of you and if it's not in you it's not going to come out of you mm -hmm. pastor simpkins and then sister sybil i was going to say that insecurity and immaturity often bring out angry words they're always they're often fight back situations and so uh security uh, one's own security about themselves, who they are, uh, being comfortable with who they are, uh, may, makes a big, big difference. And then maturity, growing in God, growing up, you know, many times we're still operating from, uh, uh, we're still operating on a version of the behavior we had before we got saved. We got a church version of what we did when we got saved, right? So we come to church and when we grew up, uh, we talk tough to back people up off of us. We talk tough to get, you know, to make folks know I ain't the one. You know, we, you, sometimes we said some harsh stuff and that served us. But when we came to the, to the Lord, we had to mature in the will of, in the word of the law so that we didn't have to back folks up with angry words, but rather with humility. Now that's a real change. That's a, that's a serious shift. Uh, but that's the growth that needs to pay, take place. The Bible says, grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we've got to grow in grace, grow in knowledge, grow in comfortability with really who I am, right? So. Mm -hmm. And then Sister Sybil and then First Lady has her hand up. Um, I, you know how people always say when a person show you they self believe what you see? Well, 
that person be having a medical crisis and nobody know it, a mental illness breakdown and nobody know it. So sometimes what you see in a person is not them. It may be a cry for help. First lady. Amen. Praise God. That is so true. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I think there's somewhere in the Bible where it says that Jesus even got mad and started throwing tables over and stuff. You know, sometimes things happen and you do might kind of make a mistake because, you know, we are human. I don't care how saved you are. I mean, and yeah, you got the word in you, but sometimes just maybe, just maybe. But I know some of y'all perfect and y'all got it all together. But some of us <laughs> Amen. So I think the most important part is when that happens, is for you to be able to go back. Don't wait, but immediately. I am so sorry. Please right. forgive me. You know what I'm saying? And when you yeah. say it, don't just say it because people know when you say things and you don't, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. Well, you know I'm not sorry. You know, yeah. but if I come back to you sincerely, you know, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And then who knows what that person is going through? Because we're all going through something, some type of some type of something. And maybe you just caught that person at that particular time. So we have to, like you said, we have to <laughs> forgive each other. We have to be understanding of, 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 of one another also. But when those times might come, and they have come, and I have seen a lot of instances where they have come in the church. You know what I'm saying? So it's just so important to um <clears throat> Put yourself back, you know, because I know once we get saved, we're all new people, you know, we're all new, but sometimes that all kind of come out and get you. But all I'm saying is just come back and repent. Amen. Because mm -hmm. the Bible mm -hmm. says you have to repent in order to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Repent, repent, repent. All right. Is there any more in the comments? Uh, no hands at this time, but you do have uh, some comments. Let's see. I think they were just agreeing with what was said. So, Amen. It. Amen. Not, that's so true. And we thank God for all those wonderful uh, uh, communicating. We're communicating with one another. <clears throat> and we thank God for those wholesome words. Uh, and then we're going to turn it to the hands of, of Elder Ivory, but just put this part in the chat, your response, all right? And we're turning it over into the hands of Elder Ivory. Can we control <laughs> what people say to us? Can we control what people say to us? And can you control your response? from someone. Can we control what people say to us? Just put it in the chat. Amen. Just put it in the chat. Elder Ivory. God bless everyone. I'm really enjoying uh, this lesson uh, here on tonight. And I tell you what, you know, uh, I know we are saved and I know we are Christians, and but the Bible is right all by itself. And when we really look at it, we can back everything uh, that we're talking about uh, with scriptures. And uh, the scriptures was really written for our learning, you know. And like First Lady said, we're growing daily. You know, some of us been saved a long time, but we are yet growing. And uh, this, this, this here, uh, I tell you, I am. I'm trying to be transparent. I'm just sitting here, just sucking it all in because this uh, topic. Uh, growing healthy communication while building relationships and supporting one another has really, I tell you, it has really marinated with my spirit and it is helping me. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm not going to be long. Uh, I see we passed the eight, eight o'clock hour, but I want to look at that uh, scripture, Proverbs 15 and one. Proverbs, the 15th chapter and the first verse. All right, it says a soft answer turns away wrath, <clears throat> but grievous words stir up anger, all right? And then that amplified Bible, Pastor Simpkins, it says a soft 
and gentle and thoughtful. You thinking about it. Answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and careless, reckless. All right, just flying off at the mouth words, they stir up anger. And I was looking and it says, uh, a hot tempered man, and you know, I'm kind of, I, you know, I'm gonna just underline man and put, you know, woman too, she could stir up strife, but he who is slow to anger calms a dispute. They put the fire out. And some information I ran across in uh, Minister Green, you kind of was hitting on it. You know, the Bible uh, lets us know that God loves peacemakers and he blesses them greatly, right? Uh, you could be a peacemaker. You can end fights. You can end grudges, all right? You can even stop anger, all right? And this proverb right here, a soft answer, all right? turns away wrath, okay? And, 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 and you know how it is, uh, even in a marriage, you know, you, you get heated up, you know, somebody could be on a whole nother level, but Pastor uh, Simpkins, that soft answer uh, should be able, you know, uh, to put that uh, spirit into uh, subjection, all right? Uh, water, you know, you put out fire with water, right? You don't fight fire uh, with fire. So in communicating, uh, we can be uh, destructive in our speech or we can be helpful in our speech. We can wound in our speech or we can heal uh, in our speech, all right? We can, you know, uh, be contentious in our speech or we can be, you know, peaceful in our speech. I had a couple of scriptures that I wanted to go to, and this this second one here, and uh, I had other comments. It says, if you don't have nothing nice to say, then just don't say nothing at all. <laughs> and I heard some. I saw somebody writing chat. Just be quiet. And sometimes it's good to to be quiet, and then sometimes it's good to to speak up, but softly, you know. It says, this is not always easy, Sister Bridget, and I know that, I know it from a fact, amen. You know, I'm the type of person, oh God, y'all, you know, they say be transparent, you know, I hold a lot of stuff in, you know, but I'm learning to speak out and speak my mind, you know, in love, uh, first lady, Sister First Lady, like Jesus did, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and at the same time, I want to be, if I do get angry, you know, the Bible tells us sin not. You know, it's a line that you, you draw. And like Pastor said, we not no domats. You know, you can take my kindness for weakness, all right? But you step on my toe, you know, I'm going to put some word on you, word for you, not this fist, you know. Uh, through love and kindness, we do draw. But Proverbs 15 and 2 says this. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. And the Message Bible says, knowledge flows like spring water from the wise, but fools are leaky faucets dripping nonsense. And I had some more uh, information that I want to uh, bring out with that. You can say the wrong thing and you can say the right thing the wrong way. Did y'all hear that? You can say the, the wrong thing and you can say the right thing the wrong way or at the wrong time or at the wrong or to the wrong person. But wisdom, and I want to underline that word wisdom. Wisdom learns what to say. Wisdom learns how to say it when to say it and to whom to say it. Truth is not enough, all right? Do you know how? Do you know when and whom to speak the truth, right? And sometimes uh, the truth, uh, it hurts, but the truth 
makes you free. All right. The truth makes you free. And even in even in, in even in relationships, uh, you know, and I had a, a scripture, you know, sometimes uh uh you know, and building uh each other up, you know, the Bible uh tells us how we need to uh communicate and build in our relationships. All right. Ephesians 4:31. Let me get that Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 31 and 32. And I want you guys to write these scriptures down. I got a chance to go back over this lesson. And in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, and I think this has already been said. It says that all bitterness, all right, and wrath and anger. And this is Bible, all right? This is some, some stuff that, that sometimes get in. And that's why it takes the fruit of the spirit, you know, to get some of this stuff out. You know, long suffering. And we talked about that. Suffering long, you know, meekness, temperance. All right. It says, but let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, bless you, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another. And that's 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 the goal. And that's what, what Christ, you know, that, that Christ-like spirit, you know, being kind to one another, building one another, another up, you know. And I know, you know, we have different uh, attitudes. And I've been in the church a long time and I've been in this world a long time. Amen. But if we do it the way the Bible say do it, I tell you that thing works out. I tell you, you could just take a, the word and you could just try it. You know, somebody come with you with some harsh words and you just uh, use this scripture here, use a gentle uh, a word on them and watch it work. Watch they calm their spirit because the Bible is right. It says, be ye kind one to another, tender heart. I kind of want to just let that marinate. All right, tender heart. And then forgiving. And I know this is repetitious. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. All right. Knowledge or folly. Okay. Knowledge is something you know, right? Knowledge is something that's known. It's facts, it's truth. You're right. It's an ability, it's an awareness, it's expertise, it's know how. All right. We know how to do it. But folly is foolishness, all right? The state of quality of being foolish, lack of understanding or sense. And I gave that story on last week, and I'm going to repeat it again about uh, Nabal, right? And David and, and Abigail, all right? Nabal acted foolish, right? David was good to them, but he acted foolish. And his wife had to intervene because <laughs> David was going to kill him for his foolishness. He didn't use no wisdom. But his wife had to come in, praise the Lord, step in and use wisdom to save their whole family. All right. And then God had to intervene. All right. Kill Nabal. Knocked him off his high horse, all right? But he was foolish in his dealings, amen. Have you ever said anything bad that you later regretted? I know I have. And how can we be wise in the words that we speak? And you can put this in the chat or you can respond if you want. We almost closing. Do your mouth have a mind? of its own. Oh, that's good right there. I kind of want to start right there. Uh, that's good. Uh, do, and I, you know, I I answered this question my own self. It's, it says, do your mouth have a mind of its own? Uh-huh. You know, and I'm, gonna, I'm a tag team with Missionary Ivory and let her respond to that one. <laughs> As I wipe my forehead past the Cynthia, just communicating, just communicating, y'all. We just communicate and praise the Lord. 
Oh, God. Oh. I see some in the chat say, sometimes, missionary, amen. Uh, Burnett says, sometimes, LOL, and she's in the hospital. Amen. We're praying for you, missionary. We love you. Hallelujah. We believe in God for you. Amen. Brother Solomon said, I have. Uh, Sister Stevenson said, I have. Uh, 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 missionary Hunter. I uh, love it. Psalms 141, 3 through 5, said a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Do wow, 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 wow. Amen. That is very good there. So do, do your mouth have a mind of its own? Do you just slip and let it just come out? Oh, wow. Do you slip and curse? Mm. Do you just slip and let anything come out of your mouth? Mm. Do we sound loud? You know, uh, words, uh, you, you, you get on my nerves. Uh, I hate you. Oh, oh Lord, oh, I can't stand you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Do we allow words uh, to come out of our mouth? As saints of the Most High God, we don't curse. And Minister Green has his hand up. Oh, go, uh, 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 go ahead, Minister Green. We have some in the chat. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, come at you on uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse one. It says, the preparation of the heart in the man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Yes. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. Verse three said, commit, the, commit thy works until the Lord and that thou shall be established. Verse number seven, when a man, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, yes. his enemy to be at peace with him. Yes. I just want to share that with you. So you got to be careful what you say. All right. I like this in the, in the, in the chat. Amen. Missionary Burnett said no cursing. Missionary no Hunter, no uh -huh. Missionary Hunter, I like that. We need a virtual altar call, Lord Jesus. Missionary Burnett uh, came back and said, you make me sick? Oh, we shouldn't say that, right? Uh, Gloria Riley, uh, we thank God for Gloria Riley being part of our Bible study. Amen. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I must check my heart. That's real good. Amen. Amen. And then we have uh, Lorraine. And she said, the Lord take out, let me say, what is the, the Lord Jesus take to the water. Mm, Sister Wright, my mouth and facial expressions have minds of their own. That's good. I'm working on it. LOL. Oh, good. Uh, uh, one more. Brother Solomon said I had it. Oh, okay. Brother Solomon said he had a friend in Vegas and said told him that he hate he hate him. Oh, uh, 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 so so we 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 got to be careful what this lips these mouths are saying. So so knowledge or folly. Mm, okay, mm. knowledge or folly, right? Lack of good sense. Listen to what the Bible says over in Proverbs, the seventeenth chapter, the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth verse. He said, he that has knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is kind of wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You know, we should speak to others as you would want God to speak to you. And that's, you know, and I know we say treat others as you want to be treated. And that's the goal. You know, treat others as you want to be treated. All right. And when you run up against somebody, because the Bible talks about wise and foolish. You know, you have some people that are wise and use wisdom. You know, I love Pastor Simpkins. Like you said, an iron fist with a velvet glove. All right. You know, an iron fist with a velvet glove. You know, I'm strong. 
but I'm going to, you know, give it to you with, you know, soft. But that don't mean that I'm no cream puff and I'm no pushover. Praise the Lord. Amen. And just like uh, First Lady said, and I'm starting to feel my health coming by simply, we got to get out of here. Uh, how Jesus, amen, when he got a little angry, he, pu he pushed them tables over. And there's something about it. He didn't have no whole lot of folks around him. And he cleaned out the whole temple. Amen. With his authority. All right. We got some authority in the word of the Lord. I, okay. Let, let, uh, 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 it, uh, <laughs> you go ahead, Elder Ivy. You go ahead. You build me up? Yeah. You, of course. Go ahead. Always. Always. Go ahead. Always. Uh, uh, listen, listen, y'all. Listen. It says here. And let's read these off. Let's just read these off. Amen. Because it's closing time. Can foolish talk complicate a relationship? Remember, we're talking about building. We're talking about building relationship. We're talking about growing healthy communication while building, amen, relationship and supporting one another. And so, so, so can foolish talk complicate relationship? Put it in the chat. Put your response in the chat. And, and based on Proverbs 15 and 2, what type of words should we speak as believers? Put it in the chat. Please put it in the chat. What type of words should we speak according to Proverbs 15 and 2? As believers, what kind of words should we speak? Please put it in the chat. Amen. Folly words is not something that the Lord, let's say that again, folly words is not something that the Lord uh, wants us to say to uh, to a hurting world or to teach one another. Or to each other. Or to each other. Have you ever spoken some folly words? Uh, God want us to talk and walk in wisdom. The Lord desires us to talk and walk in wisdom. Amen. We got to get out of here. My last scripture, my last scripture, this is Bible study. It's Proverbs 12 and 18. It says, there is that speak it like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. And another uh, saying was through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. Amen. A gentle tongue can break a bone. Words that bring healing, you know, can you remember words that made a difference in your life? Can you remember some encouraging words that someone said to you or you said to them? The words lifted your spirits, gave you strength, they showed kindness and supported you. Can you remember inviting uh, uh, someone to a fellowship? Can you remember? Was there uh, for you by just listening to you, understood why you were coming from, gave positive reinforcements. Can you remember this? The words build it uh, you up. Let's make it a habit. And this is right here in our final comments. To let our words build up confidence in each other. Amen. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. You can make it yes. no matter what you're going through. Yes. Sister Burnett, you are healed yes. by the wound in his side. Yes. Amen. We are yet praying for you. We're building each other. Uh, Minister Green, God bless you. Amen. He's opened up the windows of heaven and pulled you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. Let's make it a habit that our church will be the most friendliest church in the world. And I got to close. I got to get out of here, y'all. I got to close. Let's make it a habit to check on each other, mm -hmm. all right? Let's make it a habit to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. Let's make it a habit that our church will be the most friendliest church in the world. Let's make it a habit to keep the unity. Let's make it a habit to fellowship together even the more with Tracy and Newark. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Sipkins. I got to put it into your hands. Hey, Amen. My, my captain, she's, she's pushing me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her, go ahead, captain, the, the last words 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on, quickly. I quickly, mean, no, y'all know quickly, God will give you what you need. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> bless you, bless you, Hillary. Let me pick it up there. He left off, amen, being uh, unity with the church in Tracy, amen, and in Newark, uh -huh. amen. Let's support, continue to support Tracy. That's part of us, amen. We can be online. We can go on Facebook. We can do it on Zoom. Let's continue to support Tracy. That is part of us. Amen. Praise God. Let's make it a habit to fellowship. I love fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. Let's make an, a habit to get together and fellowship. With. If you agree with me, put the hearts. If you agree with us in the habits, amen, put hearts. Put hearts on the on. On, on the screen so we can so we can see let's make it a habit amen to get to know i think uh our iris said a little bit better with one another amen let's make it a habit to win souls uh -huh. to the kingdom let's make it a habit to tell somebody about christ let's make it a habit to tell somebody about our church let's make it a habit put it back into your spirit we've been out of church for over a year, let's put it back into our spirits at the grocery store. Tell somebody about Salarat. They're the most friendliest church in the brotherhood. The most lovingest church in the brotherhood. Amen. We love, and people got to feel that love. So the Apostle Paul encouraged us in this way. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, uh -huh. whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there is any praiseworthy of praise, think on these things. Amen. God bless you. Into the hands of our pastor. God bless you. Well, I want everybody, if you will, just unmute yourself for a second and give God some praise for the encouragement. Hallelujah. To give one another grace. Glory to God. They probably didn't mean to say that the way that that came out. So let me just move on because I know they didn't mean it like that. You know, that kind of thing. Loving on one another is that all right thank you to uh elder and missionary ivory for again a wonderful lesson amen about unity we've been there uh for the last couple you know about five weeks now glory to god that's where we will have been and we'll be there a little bit longer because the fact of the matter is we can't really uh this army cannot do the damage needs to do to the devil until we strengthen our unity with one another amen we can't do all that God has called us to do until we work as a fist, amen, as we work as a fist. Um, the Bible talks about a threefold cord is not easily broken, and I've used the example before. If you take a, a string, a, a, some thread that you know you sew with, take one strand, you can pop it like that. But if you take about three of those babies and twist them together, you're going to have a time trying to break that same little thread that you could do with just uh, when it was by itself. And so together, uh, we're much more effective than we were separated. And, uh, you know, the enemy is always going to come up with stuff to try and separate us. Glory yeah. to God. He's going to say something, you know, you know, um, Pastor, Elder Ivory said you, um, right? And that's the enemy just trying to, sometimes it's unintentional. People don't necessarily uh, mean that they're, they're doing that, but what happens is the enemy is sowing seeds of discord, amen? Yes. So uh, we ought to be building and strengthening one another. Am I talking to anybody? Y'all Y'all just do like that if you know I'm talking to, put, it, put your hand up, amen? Because the enemy doesn't want you to be unified with your brother because if you do, you'll be pulling his kingdom down. Amen. Uh, and so it's important for us standing together as one. Thank you very much to the uh, Ivories. We praise God for them. Glory to God. And for each one of you that are here tonight, we honor the Lord. God bless. Uh, like I said, it's good to be back home. Glory to God. And uh, I'm excited about what God has done. We, we, what God has done. We enjoyed our little vacation, First Lady and I. Amen. But it's, we were talking about it. It's just, it ain't not, no place like home. 
Glory to God. No place like home. And I'm so grateful. I told him, I think at the second service on Sunday, that my pillow was glad to see me. It was first service. Glory to God. My pillow. That pillow, man, I'm telling you, that pillow just wrapped around my head. I said, ooh, glory to God. Told my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. We pray <laughs> God. Praise God. Hey, Mother McCoy, good to see you, precious. Good to see you. Good Amen. to see you. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to say something, Mother? No, I just want to say uh, thank God. Is, and, and my unmuted to where you can hear me? I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. I just want to say thank God for Elder and Sister uh, Ivory. Amen. I'm praying for Sister Gornet. And y'all keep praying for Mother McCoy. And I wanted to tell him, I was trying to get in the prayer, but I missed it, that that son that they had, that was on the prayer line, that Edward Jones, son of mine, this lady had him hooked up to where he was going to get 40 years for attempted murder. The Lord stepped in that thing, in that prayers that they was praying, and along with myself, prayer prayed, and he, in December, he'll be out. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Them 40 years. If he did 40 years, I wouldn't be here and neither would him. Because he's in his 60s and 40 years from now be over 100. But God, in this coming December, he'll be laying back on, on feet. But the yeah. lady got a problem and, and she, I don't know how she did it and what she did, but whatever it was, them people was going to give him 40 years for attempted murder that wasn't even true. My God, my God. Okay, but God. But God. But God. And I want to say to the lesson tonight, we don't have, we can we can control ourselves and not talk it, but this tongue is, 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 is loose and God let us know. He the one control the tongue. And if we can go by the word of God, we'll be able to handle it. Amen. Praise God, Mother. Thank you so much. You're right. The tongue is an unruly member. Who can tame it? Uh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. And again, we talked about maturity. Uh, glory to God. Growing in God. Amen. And practicing responding rather than reacting. Amen. Practicing responding. Treating other people, folks like you want to be treated. Amen. So we praise God for each one of you tonight. Had a wonderful service on Sunday and we're looking forward to the Lord blessing. I'll be meeting with the missionaries tomorrow. I think what time am I meeting? Seven o'clock or 630 missionary hunter. Glory to God. 630, sir. 630, 630 on your personal Zoom. So for the missionaries, please check your email for the meeting invite. We will know. Lady. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, first of all, I want to say, um, Brother Ivory, Sister Ivory, my, my loved ones in the Lord, what a wonderful, wonderful lesson. I love the participation. It makes everything so nice. It makes everybody feel apart. So I thank God for the words of wisdom and the knowledge, things that we have forgotten. You know, sometimes we learn things, but uh, we kind of forget them. And sometimes we know things, but we don't do them. But you mm -hmm. made it absolutely clear tonight how we are supposed to behave. And I Honey, you said, they said, save folks don't cuss. That's what they said. Oh. That's what they say. <laughs> Hallelujah. I agree with them totally. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go to the Lord uh, in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day that we have had tonight, Father God. It has enriched, enriched our hearts and enriched our minds, Father God. It has taken us back where we need to go because sometimes we get so comfortable in the way we do things, Father God. We forget how to behave, but tonight you have brought it back and Lord, let us hang on to it as we go on on this journey that we're on and we thank you for each and every person that's on this line father god we lift up each each person that's not feeling well or sick or ill the names have already been called out for the ones who needed who has had surgery and thus and such and for the names that have not been called father we'll give them all to you because you know about each and every one and father god bless us Bless us, be with us, take care of us and watch over us, Father God, at this time. And as we leave from here tonight, Father God, let our hearts and let our minds be changed all the more to be like you. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' precious holy name, we pray. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. God bless everyone. Y'all can unmute yourselves and say hi to everybody because we know you love everybody. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.